I have to admit, it's pretty intimidating standing behind a tank filled with red piranha. Now, if you look at one of these fish as an individual, it doesn't seem that threatening. But when you see six of them swimming around like this, that's what you call a school. And when there's six fish, yeah, it definitely gets your heart racing. Now, the big question that we want to answer tonight is whether or not piranha will eat human flesh. But before we do that, first let's take a look at some of the cool anatomical features of these fish. Now, when you look at the piranha's body, they've got a very dominant head. Those big bulbous eyes tell you that these fish have incredible eyesight. But the thing that's most noticeable is that big underbite. That lower jaw tells you that this fish packs a punch when it comes to its bite. The jaw structure is broken down into four different sections. And what's so cool about these teeth is that they're interlocking, razor sharp and triangular in form, and they lock together like pieces of a puzzle. Add that together with the shaking and the spinning, and oh buddy, you get attacked by a swarm of piranhas and you're going to be in a very bad situation. And similar to sharks, they replace their teeth throughout the entire course of their lives. But unlike sharks, these entire jaw segments replace themselves periodically, which means that an entire section of the jaw falls out of the fish and then a new section grows right in. In the wild, piranha are considered predators. In many instances, they are opportunistic, which means that they'll feast upon pretty much anything they come across. But it's primarily their sense of smell and their ability to hone in on hearing that makes them such an effective predator. You have to think about where these fish live, throughout water systems in South America that are oftentimes quite murky. So when the fish can't see its prey, it needs to hone in using smell and sound. Oftentimes, they will attack things that are splashing about. This may signal an animal that is wounded and struggling, which obviously makes for an easier victim. When it comes to attacking large prey items, yes, they have been known to attack things as large as livestock. Of course, humans have been bitten, and close to 200 bites are reported every single year. When you look at the piranha, you think to yourself, OK, obviously with that dentition, it's a predator. But this is not an apex predator. There are many other animals within the piranha's environment that will take the opportunity to feast on one of these fish. Cayman, otters, river dolphins, and even waterfowl like herons and egrets will definitely take the opportunity to eat one of these fish. That's why they move together as a group. When you have a school, you seem bigger and more intimidating, which means you're much less likely to be predated upon. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. Coyote, you're going the long way around the fishbowl. Let's get into the experiment. We want to find out whether or not you're going to be bitten by one or all of these fish. There's six of them in there, so I'd say the odds are pretty good. So if you guys are ready, I'm Coyote Peterson, and I think it's time to be eaten alive by piranha. Now, I'm not going to shake my hands around there and cause a disturbance. I'm going to gently place them in slowly and see what happens. I'm going to keep my hands there for 60 seconds. There is the chance that I will be bitten. Be prepared. If that happens, there's going to be a lot of blood. So brace yourselves. <sighs> OK. All right, I'm stalling. Here we go. One. Two, three, hands going in. Start the clock, 60 seconds. They're definitely moving much more with my hands in there than when my hands were not in there. Now, they may be feeling skittish, in the presence of my hands. You can see my hand is pretty close there, actually being touched right now by the fish. Fins drifting up against me. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at that, look at that. So far, nothing. I'm gonna drift my hands closer in this direction. Okay, my hand my left hand and my forearm are completely surrounded by the piranhas. I can feel the tails brushing up against me. Oh man, fish's face is right close to my hand. Oh boy, it feels like I might take a bite. Ah. Oh, oh, nope, nope, getting smacked with tails. Hand in the middle of the fish. So my 
my right hand is, is completely away from the fish altogether, but my left hand is completely surrounded by the fish at this point. Look at that. Right in the school of piranha, no bite happening. Okay. Now that I've sort of gotten over the initial fear and the fact that the piranha are slapping their tails up against me, I'm beginning to feel like they're just gonna ignore me at this point. So far, no bite. And I feel like even if a bite came at this point, it would simply be a curiosity bite to say, what is this in our tank? Is it something that I can eat? Don't feel as if they're going to swarm into one of those frenzies like you would see in the movie where they strip all the flesh. Oh boy. Thought I was about to take a bite there. Just getting smacked by tails. No bites happening. Hands coming out. Woo! Woo! Hands shaking a little bit, I will admit that. But absolutely no bites. All flesh still intact. So what we've seen in the Hollywood B movies of these fish devouring human flesh right down to the bone definitely did not happen within this scenario. Okay. Oh, Got to shake off those nerves just a little bit. Man, when the brana are actually slapping up against your skin, you're thinking to yourself, okay, could that next movement be some of those razor sharp teeth taking a big circular chunk out of your hand or out of your forearm? <sighs> okay, so the last test, the ultimate test, is now going to be to hold this fish fillet underwater with my hand and see if they can tell the difference between the fillet and my hand. So this is going to be fish, flesh, and oils mixed together with my hand. And let's see if they go for that. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Hand and fish fillet going back in to the piranha tank. One, two, oh, it doesn't get any easier. Three. What I'm doing is actually wiggling the fillet around just a little bit. Try to give them that motion, that movement that, as we've read, piranha are drawn into things that are splashing and struggling. So if I use my hand to make the fillet look like a struggling prey item, will that evoke an attack? They honestly want nothing to do with my hand or the fish fillet. So what I'm gonna do now is drive my hand and the fillet into the school of fish and see what happens. Slowly. You guys hungry? Free feast. Human hand, half price, fish fillet. Free to consume. Anybody even want to try a taste test? Just one little bite. Anybody going to go for it? Six fish. Six fish, six chances for a bite. Nothing, absolutely nothing. At this point, I'm completely at ease with my hand being inside of the piranha's tank. You've got three fish on one side, three fish on the other. They want absolutely nothing to do with the fish fillet or with my hand. Okay, hand and fish fillet coming up and out of the water. No bites on the filet, no bites on my hand. Perhaps the rumors that piranha are bloodthirsty, ravenous, flesh-eating killers is nothing more than a rumor. Typically, they're thought of as being carnivores, but truth be told, they're really omnivores. Piranha will eat berries, nuts, and pretty much anything that they can scavenge upon. It's a misnomer in many instances that piranhas will just strip something of its flesh if it's already alive and turn it into a feast. Now, it is fair to say that this is a controlled setting, and these fish have been raised in captivity. So will piranha in the wild behave differently? I'm not sure. Perhaps that's a test that we need to place back out into the wild. So the next step is for us to head to South America, back to the Pantanal, and actually place me into the environment within a school of these fish to determine, will piranha truly eat a human alive?